NFT stocks. A huge internet sale has been announced. Everything is for sale, videos, memes, GIFs, and even tweets. And this is not because the internet is being outlawed and any content will be unavailable tomorrow. It's all about NFT, a blockchain technology that makes it possible to equate digital and real things. Thanks to NFT, digital artist Mike Winkleman, better known as Beeple, has already sold his collage for $69 million at a Christie's auction. Singer Grimes managed to get almost $6 million for her digital drawings and videos in 20 minutes. And what, without Banksy? The blockchain company Interjective Protocol bought his painting Morons from a New York gallery for $95,000 to burn it and turn it into a digital asset and then resell it for four times more expensive. What is NFT? Why is the whole world crazy about it? And how much money are people willing to pay for something that is already freely available on the internet? NFT is a blockchain technology based on the Ethereum cryptocurrency. Unlike cryptocurrencies, NFTs are not interchangeable. For example, the value of one Bitcoin that you have is no different from the value of one Bitcoin that another owner has. While each NFT is a unique token, no other such certificate can exist, both on the object side it describes and on the value side. To put it simply, if you have a $5 bill, you can exchange it for a $5 bill from, say, your friend and it won't affect you or him in any way. At the same time, you have your favorite limited edition basketball card, and that's a good example of something irreplaceable because each card is treated as a collectible and has certain individual characteristics. A card with one player is not equivalent to a card with another player, and that is because of its uniqueness. NFT allows you to get ownership of a product that exists exclusively online. It can be an image, a GIF, or a video. A token has its own unique value because it cannot be divided or replaced by another. It contains information about its owners and the transactions through which it has passed. In this way, any digital object can be assigned an NFT, which gives a person the ownership of that object. The idea behind NFT is that you get a digital signature in the same way that an artist signs a painting and thereby authenticates it. Thanks to NFT, authors of images, animations, videos, and anything else that can be stored online can sell their creations. That means you can even sell your own selfies. And someone could theoretically own it. A reasonable question arises. If someone becomes the owner of something virtual, would it be illegal to use that object by anyone other than the owner himself? Does showing a copy of a Banksy painting automatically make you a pirate? Let's break it down. The owner of an NFT gets a digital object without any intellectual rights to it. And in the case of a resale, he even pays a percentage to the author. The main thing NFT gives you is the right to be proud that your frog is the original and everyone else is just a reproduction. It's like a kind of collecting or just a way to support the authors in hard times when reproductions are made by print screen. But NFT is not legally regulated in any way, anywhere, and is not yet a way to assert ownership. From a legal point of view, buying a crypto art is the same as buying a plot on the moon. It is real, but it doesn't really give you any rights or opportunities. So far, however, this has not prevented the NFT movement from gaining momentum. Three years ago, the entire NFT market was worth no more than $42 million. By the end of 2020, it had grown by 705% to $338 million. NFTs are sold at online auctions like Nifty Gateway and others. The auction was even joined by Christie's, an auction house with nearly 300 years of history, which began accepting payments in Ethereum cryptocurrency to sell the tokens. Among the bidders, one can see both anonymous and world-famous people. Not so long ago, the famous animation Nyan Cat was sold for almost $600,000 in Ethereum equivalent. Who likes cats and gifts that much is unknown. The buyer didn't even have a nickname, only a cryptocurrency wallet number. Animation is far from the most unusual thing that is bought with the help of NFT. Twitter founder Jack Dorsey auctioned off the first ever tweet of his own authorship. For it are already given $2.5 million, which Jack plans to give to charity. What, in turn, does the buyer get? Nothing but a symbolic token. The account stays with Dorsey, and the owner of the tweet can only look at his acquisition from the sidelines, just like everyone else. It's just like naming a star after yourself, and no one cares that the star might belong to some super civilization. And of course, how could such an event like NFT avoid Elon Musk, who has already mastered the music editor Fruity Loops and created a track about NFT? 
for which they are already offering more than a million dollars. It's scary to imagine how much money Musk will be able to make when paint comes along. Even major corporations have joined the NFT mania. The NBA, along with Dapper Labs, one of the first companies to actively use tokens, launched Top Shot, a marketplace for popular U.S. sports cards featuring NBA players only not as pieces of cardboard but as NFTs with slices of game moments. In the five months of the portal's existence, it has sold more than $200 million in tokens. For example, a LeBron James dunk card, which you can easily watch on YouTube, was sold for $208,000. Although for that money, you could just invite LeBron to your home to make that dunk right in your living room. What makes people spend real money on NFTs is still a mystery. One reason could be the possibility of profitable resale due to the wave of popularity of NFT. NFT technology has also begun to be used by soccer clubs, Formula One, Nike, Vodafone, and other companies. Because of this, tokens cover more and more types of digital objects. The most high-profile success has been achieved by digital artist Mike Winkleman, better known on Instagram under the nickname Beeple, whom we mentioned earlier. Beeple posts digital drawings every day that are hard enough to describe in words, better to see with your own eyes to understand. It's a provocative mix of future, politics, aliens, post-apocalyptic pop culture, and nature that, for some unknown reason, is impossible to look away from. Beeple is an established artist. He has done graphics for MTV and Super Bowl events, collaborated with Apple and SpaceX, and Louis Vuitton used Mike's drawings in their collections. However, he still found it difficult to monetize his creations because most of them are freely available. With the arrival of NFT, everything has changed. Winkleman first heard about blockchain and the formation of a market for crypto art in the second half of 2020. A nifty gateway auction representative texted him in September 2020, noting Winkleman's popularity, and asked if he wanted to make some money. Winkleman ignored the message, but soon after seeing artists he knew making, in his words, a lot of money, he finally decided to give it a try. The first Beeple auction took place in October 2020 and caused such demand that it overloaded the nifty gateway servers. Mike put three of his works up for sale one of which was bought for $66,666,000, and four months later, the new owner resold it for $6.6 million. For that price, some enthusiasts bought a video called Crossroads, which depicts a creature that looks like Donald Trump. For Beeple's next auction, the token selling service has prepared nine additional servers to handle the influx of buyers. Already in the first five minutes of the auction for Mike's work, paid half a million, and the most expensive lot was worth $777,000. Over two days of bidding alone, Beeple earned $3.5 million, though he could only make reposts of these works before. Beeple celebrated with an actual champagne shower, though knowing his passion for drawing, he could have just painted that shower, sold the drawing, and bought a champagne ocean. But Winkleman's real triumph was an auction held by Christie's in March. It presented the work every day, the first 5,000 days. And it is not conventional 5,000 days. Beginning in 2007, for 13 years, Beeple did a drawing every day. Even his own wedding and the birth of his children have not stopped his work. Beeple combined 5,000 drawings into one collage and put it up for auction. The lot eventually went under the digital hammer for $69 million. This sale made him the third living artist in terms of the total value of paintings sold. Beeple and the sale of his paintings through NFT effectively equated digital and classic art. If this NFT bubble doesn't burst in the future, it will allow internet artists to establish their authorship and gain recognition, including monetary recognition. Thus, in the near future, prestige galleries will be replaced by prestige servers. Let's say, according to experts, that tokens are another crypto explosion on a level playing field because to pay huge money for something intangible is pure stupidity. However, on the other hand, you should agree that we often pay not so much for things as for brand names because the real cost of things is much lower than the price tag. We determine the price of a thing depending on whether other people want it. If so, then it has value. What, for example, creates the value of the iPhone? By and large, it is nothing more than a good smartphone. It has no cosmic or radically new features. And there is nothing that has not been used or implemented by other smartphone manufacturers in any way. To complete the picture, let's take a live example from art. Rubens' paintings, The Abduction of the Daughters of Leucippus, in the 1950s was recognized by experts, not as a painting by Rubens himself, but by one of his students. 
As a result, the picture depreciated and moved somewhere in the vault of the National Museum of Art, Architecture and Design in Oslo. But in our time, another expert has looked at the picture more closely and declared that the painting is real after all. After which the painting, of course, instantly jumped in value and returned to its place of honor in the museum. Moreover, over 70 years, the painting itself has not changed. This proves once again that money is paid for the certificate of authorship, and the money just fall from the sky. Well, the fact that you can sell even a blank space back in 1958 successfully proved the artist Yves Klein when he made 3,000 people come and look at the empty gallery. Well, not quite empty. The paintings in it were painted with white paint on the white walls. Klein's idea was that the artist's personality was more important than the works themselves. Critics were amused that some young artist imagined that something existed, even when there was nothing around. In today's world, the concept of value is blurred, and the concept of real value has been virtually eliminated. What awaits us next?